Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are checking out yet another RTX 3080 graphics card, and this one is a bit exciting for me as it is my first ever EVJ product review after about 20 years on the job. And we're starting with a pretty special card as well. It is the For The Win 3 Ultra Gaming. Bit of a mouthful there, but that is par for the course these days when it comes to product names. Anyway, without wasting any time, let's get into the review. The For The Win 3 Ultra is a pretty typical high-end graphics card in terms of weight and dimensions. It measures 300 millimeters long, 137 millimeters tall, and 57 millimeters wide. And that makes it a 2.7 slot card. So in other words, it takes up three expansion slots. In terms of weight, it's certainly up there at 1573 grams, so comparable to the MSI Gaming Extra and Palette Game Rock OC, for example. Design wise, I think the card looks pretty great, though it's not perfect in my opinion. I don't want to focus too much on the aesthetics because ultimately it is stuff like thermals, operating noise, overclocking, and general performance that really matters, but I recognize that people do care about looks, especially when spending huge amounts of money. But as I said, the card does look very good, but EVGA has made the old classic MSI mistake here and included some red accents. Thankfully, after years of trying, we were able to get MSI to stop putting red bits on their graphics cards, and they look pretty great now. This EVGA design would have been pretty well perfect had they not included the strange red detailing at either end of the card, and the GeForce RTX branding could have been grey or white, for example. So a bit of an odd design choice here, but for those of you with red-themed builds who care about looks, then I guess these highlights will be a welcomed addition. But moving past the red bits, the card looks very nice, and the silver trimming on the edge of the card is very cool. Not only does it look visibly impressive with the card powered down, but when turned on it becomes a huge RGB light bar, offering some really nice effects. So if you're into your RGB, this card is certainly going to appeal. There's even an EVGA backlit logo on the back side of the card. Then on the front side of the card, pushing air over the heatsink, are three 90mm fans embedded in a black plastic fan shroud, all of which spin in the same direction, though the centrally located fan is offset by 10mm, which EVGA says increases the direct airflow area by 16%. EVGA also hasn't made the mistake of wrapping the fan shroud around the left and right sides of the card, and instead has left the heatsink fully exposed here to allow for maximum airflow. Moving around to the back side of the card, we find a full length aluminium backplate featuring a number of cutouts and another red detail, which could be a little bit unfortunate depending on your preferences here. That said though, the backplate does look great and features a number of cutouts to help aid in airflow and avoid trapping heat beneath. Then finally, around the IO panel, we find the base configuration, I suppose. It's the same configuration you will find on NVIDIA's Founders Edition. So that means just a single HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs. The IO bracket, though, has been given a matte black finish, so that looks quite nice. Okay, so time to take the cooler off for a better look. The 1092 gram cooler is secured to the PCB using nine screws, all of which are accessible via the backplate. The cooler design though is relatively simple compared to some of the other designs that we've looked at. There's no additional bracing for example and all the components are cooled using a single large heatsink. Making contact with the GA102 die and 10 GDDR6X memory chips is a large copper base plate which connects to 7 nickel plated copper heat pipes, 4 of which are 8mm in diameter. Then cooling the VRM components are two aluminium strips which make contact with both the power stages and inductors. For making contact with the power stages, EVGA has used thermal pads, and for the inductors they've gone with thermal putty. As for the cooler itself, I think EVGA has done quite a good job here in maximizing fin coverage using a similar design to what we saw with the ASUS Tough Gaming. The backside is a little less impressive, as it's really just a PCB shield, given EVGA hasn't included any thermal pads, which help turn it into more of a heat spreader. This isn't that big of a deal, but typically we do see a small improvement for VRM and GDDR6X memory when using thermal pads to help extract heat from within the PCB. That said, EVJ has been a bit creative here by opening up sections of the PCB to allow air to flow through, and not just at the end of the card like what we've seen with many other AIB models. Still, as nice as that is, I think it would have been a good idea to include a few thermal pads here, especially given that this is an $800 US graphics card. 
Now, taking a closer look at the PCB, which measures 289 millimeters long and 124 millimeters tall, we find 22 power stages, 19 for the GPU and three for the GDDR6X memory. Then feeding power into the card are three eight pin PCIe power connectors, which are very much necessary on this model as EVGA does offer an XOC BIOS with a 450 watt power limit. And since this model does feature a dual BIOS, it is very easy to flash the OC BIOS with the XOC version while keeping the normal 380 watt BIOS, allowing you to switch between the two after a quick system reset. Now, in terms of clock specifications, EVJ lists a core clock frequency of 1800 MHz, which is a 5% boost over the 1710 MHz default spec. That's certainly not the highest factory OC we've seen, but it is up there. Then as usual, the memory has been left at 19 gigabits per second. So let's move on to see what clock speed this model maintains when under load. Here's a look at the operating temperatures and shut off the Tomb Raider after 30 minutes of gameplay. The For the Win 3 Ultra peaked at 73 degrees in a 21 degree room inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, fully populated with fans. This is a reasonably good temperature and we'll compare this result with other RTX 3080 models in a moment. Now, in order to maintain this temperature, the fan spun it up to 1700 RPM, which is really very reasonable as most AIB models have spun their fans at between 1800 and 1900 RPM. We also saw a typical core clock speed of 1935 MHz, and under the same conditions, that is a 5% increase over the Founders Edition model. So we're seeing the same sustained clock speeds as other AIB OC models. Now it is worth noting that the For The Win 3 Ultra is an extremely power hungry graphics card as it uses 23% more power than the FE model. And that's stock out of the box power draw. That means whereas the FE model consumes 323 watts, the For The Win 3 Ultra consumed 398 watts and that's just for the graphics card. Previously, the most power hungry model that I tested was Gigabyte's Gaming OC at 354 watts, but the For The Win 3 Ultra is still 12% above that. Now for overclocking, first I used the default 380 watt BIOS and this allowed for a stable overclock of about 2040 megahertz. That's what we saw on average in our Shadow of the Tomb Raider test. Here the card peaked at 75 degrees with a fan speed of just 1750 RPM. I also pushed the memory up to 20.6 gigabits per second and this overclock survived a two hour stress test. Then I switched over to the OC BIOS and installed the 450 watt XOC BIOS, which is available over on the EVGA forums. Quite incredibly, this allowed my card to operate at up to 2.1 gigahertz. And this isn't a 2.1 gigahertz overclock that's stable for a few benchmark passes. I left the thing running overnight and it was still going the next day without issue. So a very impressive result indeed. At 2.1 GHz, the For The Win 3 Ultra ran it up to 76 degrees with a fan speed of 2200 RPM. So it was very noisy, but that's the price you'll pay for an air-cooled 2.1 GHz overclock on an RTX 3080. So with all of that out of the way, let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we'll be testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used, and for this one we have just a few select games to look at. Like what I did with my previous RTX 3080 reviews, I'm not going to pour over the game data. There's really no point in pointing out the 3-5% to performance gains that we see from overclocking. Basically, these RTX 3080 graphics cards have very little OC headroom, and that makes for a rather unexciting manual overclock. All that said, the EVGA RTX 3080 for the Win 3 Ultra Gaming is one of the best, actually it is the best card we've tested yet in terms of overclocking capabilities. Though, as usual, I should note that you should probably take OC results with a grain of salt, as it can be down to sort of luck of the draw with silicon quality, even when talking about these higher quality models. As we saw earlier, when it comes to power draw, the For The Win 3 Ultra is a bit of a power pig, sucking down almost 400 watts out of the box. We also see that our manual overclock didn't push things too much higher, reaching 416 watts. Still, that is obviously a huge amount of power to be consumed by just the graphics card. And then with the XOC BIOS installed, that figure increased to 436 watts. And you just saw the thermal and fan data for that overclock a bit earlier in the review. Now, here's a look at the GPU die temperature for both our stock out of the box configuration, as well as a noise normalized test. Stock, the For The Win 3 Ultra isn't that impressive running at 72 degrees, though keep in mind it is sucking down around 15% more power than other AIB models. 
So given the increased power draw, the performance isn't bad. I could have lowered the power limit for a more apples to apples test, but the point here is to show you how the cards behave out of the box. Noise normalized, we see the For the Win 3 Ultra fares a little better relative to the competition, and with normalized power draw would no doubt be comparable to some of the other models we've tested. Interestingly, we see the temperature behind the GPU on the rear side of the PCB is quite a bit lower than that of the Gigabyte and Pallet models and is comparable to the MSI Gaming X Trio, suggesting we could be looking at a lower PCB temperature across the board. The VRM temperature certainly suggests this, with the For the Win 3 Ultra running cooler than the Gaming X Trio and Gaming OC, even when noise normalised. Of course, all AIB models, and even NVIDIA's own FE card, pass this test with ease, as these components can safely run much hotter than what we're reporting here. The same is also true for the GDDR6X memory, though the For the Win 3 Ultra performs exceptionally well here, matching the GameRock OC and Tough Gaming OC. The fact that it runs 5-6 to six degrees cooler than the Gigabyte Gaming OC is of no real advantage. So there you have it, EVGA's RTX 3080 For the Win 3 Ultra Gaming. It is an RTX 3080 graphics card that kind of does it all really. It, well, first of all, it looks quite impressive and it has some nice RGB effects as you saw. It certainly packs a high quality cooler that performs very well. And it also has a number of really great features such as the dual BIOS with the optional 450 watt XOC BIOS. And there are nine ICX sensors that allow you to easily monitor VRM, GDDR6X and board temperatures. So that's a really nice touch. The only downside here, other than availability, which all RTX 3080 and 3090 graphics cards are seriously suffering from right now, is the price. Nvidia set the MSRP at $700 US for the RTX 3080, and the closest EVJ gets to that figure is $730 US with the XC3 Black Gaming. The For the Win 3 Ultra Gaming though, well, that costs $810 US. So a 16% markup, which doesn't actually sound that bad when you put it that way, but we are talking about an extra $110 US. I'd say for most of you, despite how good the For the Win 3 Ultra is, it just doesn't make sense over much cheaper models like this Asus Tough Gaming. That said, it does make a lot of sense for those of you overclocking and wanting to extract the absolute most you possibly can from an RTX 3080, even if we are only talking about 30 to 40 megahertz more, which amounts to basically nothing in terms of FPS performance. That 450 watt XOC BIOS really does make the For the Win 3 Ultra a bit of a king on the overclocking scene, and that's why it's coming in at such a steep premium. Whether or not you want to pay that premium, well, obviously that's for you to decide, but price aside, this is a great quality RTX 3080. And that is going to do it for this video. So hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, give us one of those. There won't be any more RTX 3080 videos anytime soon. We have no more planned. So we'll be moving on to stuff like the RTX 3070 and then of course the upcoming Navi stuff. So that will probably be announced well, shortly, I probably shouldn't say too much more than that. But yeah, there'll be many more GPU reviews to come. They won't necessarily be RTX 3080s though. Uh, what else do we have? Well, there's a lot of stuff coming up. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe to, of course, Ryzen 5000 processors and all that. Also, if you would like to become part of the awesome Harbour Unbox community, then check out our Patreon account. The link for that is at the top of the description. Uh, signing up will get you access to our monthly live streams, which Tim and I do, and we address your questions live. We do that at least once a month. There'll probably be a special Ryzen 5000 edition one coming up after those reviews. Uh, what else we got? Patreon Discord. So again, Discord chat there for Patreon members. Two and myself are also active there. You can ask questions there. Uh, behind the scenes videos, Q and A's. Anyway, if you're interested, link for that, as I said, is in the video description, but if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.